This is an updated video of a video that I did close to 3 years ago, a simple video that has as its main purpose showcasing the fact that updating your graphics card drivers will in fact give you more performance in gaming and in general usage. This video is an update and uses a brand new testing system with DDR5 RAM memory, an RTX 3090 Super graphics card and an Intel i7 13700K CPU. And we will test no less than 5 different Nvidia graphics card drivers to see how much performance was gained with each update. As for the drivers, we have 3 regular gaming drivers and 2 Nvidia Studio drivers. I've chosen 3 of the gaming drivers and two of the studio drivers to showcase that both type of drivers work just fine in gaming and general work tasks. The oldest driver is 512.15, released in March of 2022. This driver is one of the earliest drivers to fully support the RTX 3090 Ti and thus is a good starting point. The next drivers are the 528.02, released in January of 2023, and finally the latest driver, 552.22, released just a few days ago. As for the studio drivers, we are using the 546.01 driver released in November of 2023 and the 551.86 driver released in March of 2024. We start with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, updated to the latest version. The game is running at 1080p and all settings are turned to their max. Vertical synchronization is disabled and ray tracing is set to high while the DLSS is set to quality. And here we see that the older driver reached an average frame rate of 68 frames per second, with the low 1% at 56 and the 0.1% at 24 frames per second. Then with the next driver, 552.22, we see a small bump in performance in both low and 0.1% frame rates, and a higher increase from 68 frames per second to 73, a nice increase of 5 frames per second. As for the studio drivers, both show a small increase in the frame rates, but the latest version shows the highest low 0.1% frame rate of the lineup. Of course, we are seeing only marginal improvements with 4 drivers on what is still a newer graphics card. Older graphics cards might benefit more from these newer drivers as the software had time to mature. The next game is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, also running at 1080p and with the maximum settings and RTX turned to their ultra preset. This game is highly demanding on both the CPU and the graphics card, especially with the introduction of ray tracing. And here, the oldest driver has a good performance, with the average frame rate at 92 frames per second, the low 1% frame rate at 44 frames per second, and the 0.1% frame rate at 20 frames per second, being ahead of the newer 528.02 by a few points, and losing only on the average frame rate. However, the latest game ready driver at version 552.22 shows its strong points by being better than all the other game ready drivers, even though it's only by 1 to 2 frames per second. And when we look at the studio drivers, things are getting a bit odd. For instance, the 546.01 driver has the highest low 1% frame rate but falls in line with the older drivers, while the newest studio driver, 551.86, has the highest average frame rate and the highest 0.1% frame rate but a lower 1% frame rate than the previous studio driver. Either way, we can see that there is a clear performance improvement with each driver in at least one area. Even though the studio drivers are the better in performing ones, they are still not the go-to solution for gamers as these drivers are released not as often as the game-ready drivers. We continue though with our testing with one of the best games of the last decade, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This game is played to this very day by new and old players and it never gets old. It's also one of those games that is good to use for testing and it's reliable performance wise. Just like any other game, this one is running at 1080p with all settings turned to their maximum. However, this being the newer variant of the game, it has the added benefit of using ray tracing to enhance the graphics and of course, that is enabled as well and set to high. When we look at the average frame rate, the newer studio driver is dominating the charts. However, when we switch to the low 1% frame rate, the performance is changing for the older drivers, with the game rated driver 552.22 getting second place ahead of the older drivers, including the studio driver. And when we talk about the 0.1% frame rate, the older studio driver takes the lead by no less than 7 frames per second, while the newer studio driver is on the second place and quite close to the older game rated drivers. This shows once again that while the newest driver do have a better performance overall, it really depends on the application and the video game you are using.
And finally, the last game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also running at 1080p and with all its settings turned to their maximum. And with this game, the average frame rate is the same for both studio drivers, with the game rated driver getting quite close. In fact, the average frame rate is so close that we are talking about 1 to 2 frames per second at best. The low 1% frame rate is different here. The top spot is the latest studio driver, while the older studio driver takes a back seat and drops quite hard to the second to last place, the first two places being taken by the latest drivers of their versions, both studio and game ready. And when we switch to the 0.1% frame rate, things are again quite odd to say the least. The highest frame rate is with the older studio driver, followed closely by the latest studio driver. Meanwhile, the best performance with the game ready drivers is with the 552.22, which so happened to be the latest game ready driver. And when we look at all the games we've tested, we can see that in general, the newer the driver, the better the performance you get. However, this does not mean that you will see a tangible performance boost, as some drivers will only improve the frame rate by 1 to 2 frame rates per second at best. The differences between the game review drivers and the studio drivers is noticeable in terms of more stability and perhaps a better fix on some issues, even though the studio drivers have the same fixes found on the game review drivers. The main differences between them being that the studio drivers are optimized for professional software and tasks, such as video rendering and number processing, to just name a few. In the end, the idea that a newer driver performs worse than the previous driver is false. To some extent, of course, there are duds everywhere because drivers are made by humans and we are prone to mistakes. However, do not overthink this and update your drivers when it comes time to do that because you will only have things to gain and little to nothing to lose.